As it turns out, I forgot to turn my accent light on for that entire video. So, welcome to a show without an accent light. channel. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to go over kind of the nitty gritties of a Kubeflow install and kind of the bits and pieces that you're really going to want to be familiar with before you do your Kubeflow install. So the three main pieces that I'm going to cover today are the tool KFCTL, the file, the kfdef file, as well as customize and all the files surrounding it. So like I mentioned in my previous video, Kubeflow is a, a difficult install because there's so much of it that is related to your infrastructure and installing it on top of that. So to really do a clean install, and you're going to need to understand these things and how to leverage them for your infrastructure. So let's go ahead, jump into this, and we're going to go look at some of these things. So the first repository that I want to point your eyes to is the uh, Kubeflow manifest repository. So let me pull. So let me pull that up on screen. So in this repository, you can see here that there is a lot of stuff, a lot of manifests, and we're going to ignore a lot of them for the time being, and we're going to focus on the kfdef folder. So here you can find the kfdef folder, and in it you're going to see a bunch of um, different YAML files, and all of these are just different definitions, different combinations and setups, uh, to deploy on different infrastructure. So if you go th look through here, there's an Anthos, an AWS, a GCP, uh, is, uh, just a bare metal Istio, and I believe there's, yeah, an IBM and some other stuff. So that's what you're getting here in this thing. And these are all the KF defs. So if you see in documentation them referring to KF defs, these are KF defs. So what's in a KF def? Um, we can pull it up here. Let's just go ahead and do the Istio and Dex one. All right. So this is a KF def file. All it is is it, it kind of follows the uh, a KF def file kind of follows the Kubernetes patterns for YAML files. You have your API version up here. You have your kind. It's a KF def and boom, 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 your spec. So this is your Kubernetes 101 uh, definition file, but this is a Kubeflow definition file, KFDEF, that's what it means. So what this does is this is the file that Kubeflow uses or the KFCTL uses to define and build out your infrastructure. So in it, we're looking at what applications to install if it's a customized config, where is the ref, the um, the reference to the repository? So here we can see it's in applications, applications CRD, and this is the application ref to our customized config. We're going to get to customize a little bit later in this video, so don't worry about it if it's a little bit confusing. It's just the customized. So everything in this file here is describing what namespace, what manifest files to use, it is describing your install. Now, this isn't really going into customizing the install, except that this will decide what gets installed. So this one has Istio and Dex. So let's go ahead and find the Dex. And you'll notice here that there is a stuff setting up and installing Dex. So not only do we have a OIDC auth service here, we also have the Dex install here. And this does a little bit to configure um, some values here, where which namespace it's going to be installed in and whatnot. And 
deploys these things into the cluster for you. So the reason this is important is if you already have DEX in your server on your Kubernetes, if you already have DEX in your Kubernetes cluster, you don't want to install this DEX. You want to configure your DEX to work with it. So you would not, you would uh, comment this out or delete it from your file. If you are already running Istio, you would not want to install Istio because you already have it and you just want to remove it from um, your KF def. So this is your KF def. Uh, there's uh, some other things that this can do if you're looking at it. So this is another thing here that you can define your URL and you can point it to the um, your repository. And that, that's a really cool way of being able to uh, make it kind of a one-click deploy because if your company um, or your service provider like GCP or IBM or SUSE or Red Hat, whoever provides your Kubernetes cluster, they can also provide you a KF def file that will work with your infrastructure or the infrastructure that's provided to you. So that, that is the entire reason for this. You can see that this one is deploying the Seldon Core operator, but if you wanted to use uh, something other than the Seldon Core, you could do that. You, you need to deploy the its operator through here, and there's several different um, ones that you can choose from. And so this is just a file for laying out what gets deployed. Now, you see that there's these uh, customized directories. You need to learn what customize is to really get the full power of this because this for the most part just lays out what gets installed but not how it gets installed. So let's pull up uh, customize. I'm gonna share all these links. This is the customized website. So here you can see all of the customize um, resources and different things like that. Um, a really cool use here is, so if you're unfamiliar with customize, uh, customize in the shortest number of words is CSS for Kubernetes configuration. So basically what it is, is it's a layering configuration on, so you have this base thing that you wanna edit, but you don't want to edit that base thing. You just want to layer another file on with cascading style sheets. That's kind of what customize is. So here, customize actually gives you the ability to try it out. So you can open this up and you can drag some YAML files on here. I already have created one. So let's just drag that on here and we can play around with how customize works. I already made a basic deployment uh, just of an Nginx and I got this off of someplace on the Kubernetes website or you can make it, it's very easy. So let's drag this in here to see what we have. So here we can see we have some interesting stuff like replicas and an app name, what image is going to deploy, some metadata, whatnot. This is your basic Kubernetes. So what, uh, what customize does is it allows you to change some of the, some of this stuff. So let's say, oh, well, we don't want three replicas. We want uh, uh, six replicas. So we want six replicas. All right, we can do six replicas, and we want it to be version one fifteen because our team's a little bit more on the bleeding edge. I'm not even sure if 115 is the one. All right, so we can save the patch and save the diff. All right, so you can see here that while we maintained this base YAML file, we have created something completely different. And this is all that customize does. It allows you to customize it without changing the base. And this is how you can customize your deployment because if we go back to these, we can see that it's giving a customized directory. So pipeline API service, this is its customized directory. So let's go back and look at that customized directory. So here you find all the directories and this is you know the MXNet job operator. Um, all of these are different things that you can customize in the base standard install. So 
let's look at one. Here is Knative. So here are the CRDs and here is the serving installs. This is the customized way of doing things. So you have this base and these are just describing your customization. You can see here. So this is just customize. Uh, if, if you'd like me to do a video just on customize, I can do that. Leave me a comment and um, below and I will do a video just on customize. So if that's what you want to do, but that's what this is. This is your customization of your application that you're deploying. And it, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, again, if you want me to do a video, please leave me a link below and I can do a video just on customize and how to fully utilize it in your cluster. All right, so now we've covered customize. We've covered KFDEF. The really the last thing to cover is KFCTL, or I like to say KFCTL. But uh, so really the last thing that we need to cover is that this is the command line and actually hopefully in the future it will be an operator. So uh, the KFCTL, they're working on building an operator for. And this operator is actually going to monitor your cluster and make sure that it stays in the right deployment so you can make some changes to your directory wherever you hold these files. And that operator will automatically update your cluster to be in the operate, operating correctly, as well as if something changes, it will work to get your cluster back to where you wanted the application's deployments. So. Right now, uh, I think the operator is in alpha, and so it's probably pretty unstable. I probably wouldn't recommend using it unless if you're just playing around with it. For right now, I would just say use the command line, the CTL part of it, and it's pretty easy and straightforward to use. We're gonna just jump over to the terminal. All right, so at this point we have KF CTL installed. So you can just do kfctl help, and you can see here, this applies alpha features, so I'm not going to be covering that right now. If you wanna look at their alpha features, that's there. So you have apply, build, um, completion, delete, and generate. So this is just your shell completion. Um, it's nothing fancy, it's a kind of pretty standard thing. Delete, you can use to delete a Kubeflow application. Um, generate uh, is really been deprecated by build. So what this does is it builds out your things. So we can go over to uh, SUSE's branch. So OpenSUSE has a branch here. Manifests, we can look at their kfdef file here. Let's see, kfdefs. Um, they have a V1 branch and they have this one, right? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, it's right here. So they have theirs right here. And let's go ahead and just go to raw, copy this here and W get it. Uh, let's see, we're going to do a temp. Uh, KF deploy. All right, so in here, we're gonna w get our file. And so now we have this, this YAML file, this KF def file. Let's look at it. And so the, really, I, I don't care about any of this, all of the deployment stuff. This is just setting it up for SUSE's CASP platform. But the really key thing here is that it has this URL that is pointing at that branch that we were looking at. And what that's going to do, if we run Q, uh, KFCTL build dash, so I want to point out that there are some version or there are some flags here. So let's go ahead and look at build and do the dash H here. 
So we can look at these flags. So V is going to give us verbose, H is going to give us help, and F is going to let us supply a file. So let's do this. Let's do build-v. For verbose, just gives us more logging in case something goes wrong. And then dash F here. And for this F, we're going to, we're gonna give it uh, this file. So what this is going to do is it's going to build out our deployment. It's gonna pull all those customized files down for us and it's going to then let us edit it. So we're going to do this. You're going to watch it work. So it's done everything. If you now do an LS here, you can look and see we have a customized folder. It built everything out for us based off of that manifest directory that or that manifest repo that was defined in your KF def. So your company can make its own repo, specify it in the KF def, and here you go. Now we can go in and let's say we don't want to use the PNS process namespace, but we want to use the Kubernetes, the K8S API. So we can do vim customize. Um, there should be Argo base. Uh, let's see, it's called parans env. And we can edit this, and instead of PNS, we can set this to being a KDS API. Now we have updated our container runtime executor to be the KDS API. Or we could, you know, change it back to PNS, or we could change it to Docker API, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is how we customize our deployment of um, Kubeflow. Now, if we want to go back to the KFCTL and we can look at the last thing and then this apply is the thing that actually does the deployment. It's it's applying it to your cluster, your Kubernetes cluster. So if you do a KFCTL apply here, dash v, v for verbose and dash F for our file and then we can just pass it the same file that we did here, it would, make this configuration in your Kubernetes cluster. So it's very important that, and, and a de Kubeflow deployment is not a simple or fast task because there are a lot of things in there. Uh, we can go back, uh, let's look at the customized directory. That is everything in this, in this deployment. That is everything that is getting, going to get deployed and it's a lot of stuff. So. You want to make sure that those things are going to work for your infrastructure. All right. Well, that is pretty much it. Uh, KFCTL doesn't have much more in it. It's very self-explanatory, but it is the tool that's going to make this uh, deployment. And it uses customize to do that. And it also uses the KF def file. So I hope you found this this useful. I hope that it kind of explains some of these terms that are thrown around on the website. I know the very first time I saw KFDEF, I was like, what file is that? Where are these files? How, how what do they do? Um, and it wasn't, and it wasn't clear because uh, unless if you actually go into the repository, that, that folder, that directory is the only thing called KFDEF. Um, and so unless if you're really digging into it, it can be kind of obfuscated as, as to exactly what they are. But this is how you install. I hope that this is giving you the tools to make a clean install. And you really have to know what you're installing into, what cluster you're installing into. I need to do more on a series on uh, installing Kubernetes and the things to understand when you're going to do a Kubernetes install. But this will let you manipulate and update the KF install, the Kubeflow install, to run on your Kubernetes cluster. Anyways. I hope that you all have learned something. I hope that this has been educational and entertaining. And I, uh, yeah, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. If you didn't like it, go ahead and subscribe and see if these videos get any better for science.